Hi everybody, welcome to another Blackstone Fortress project video. Today we're going to be doing Dyak Grek, who I have been so excited to do. I, I saved him towards nearly the last, mainly because I wanted to have him be a motivation piece. I think Kroot look awesome and he has the most character I have seen in a model in quite a while. For a relatively minor race, I think that they're absolutely stunning. That being said, let's get into it. We start off by doing the base colors. Now, we're showing this very quickly, but you may notice that while Diagrax's skin is supposed to be green, I'm actually doing it as blue. The reason for this is because his the, the shading on him is very subtle. It's a very subtle pale blue. It would be very difficult to get with a wash, so I'm actually going to just layer up from green. Really, the base colors for this guy are largely blue and tan with a little bit of red, and most of the colors just kind of form out of those two in most cases. I'm using international blue here, and honestly, it's one of my favorite colors to work with. It goes on just slightly translucent, and that gives you a lot of wheel room. It's a very beautiful color, it's very muted, it allows you to kind of go much more saturated or even more desaturated, and it's somewhere between light and dark, really. Once the blue is on, I go in and start doing some base coating in a light tan color for the gun, hard mechanical parts, as well as all the leather bits, of which there are quite a few on this guy. Again, just like the blue, this is a base color that I'm going to be taking in two different directions here with washes and highlights. It's going to look pretty cool as we go along and do this. I, I dig the process. A thing I don't show in my videos very often that frankly is boring to watch, I actually clean up between shots. So here I'm painting some tan around the blue, and whenever I make a mistake, I go in and clean it up. This helps me keep the model's color very tight, very clean, and generally makes a much nicer finished piece. I am moving quickly and fairly precisely, but when I do make a mistake, I make sure I do clean it up. All the metal bits get a standard dark gunmetal color from the Vallejo Liquid Metal range. Again, this is just like painting with something that's the consistency of water, but gives some of the best coverage you can get. I'm still pretty neat with it. I do go in and clean up, but he's got a little few delicate parts. I am pretty impressed with my control here. I was able to get that eyepiece very cleanly on there, as well as his hearing enhancer and some of his other bits as well inside of his head spines, hair spines, I'm not sure what they're called. The outer section of the robe got a burnt red color. Now, it, it, this is a really weird color to work with because it goes on very bright, very vibrant, and it dries a very dull, flat red. I like working with it because it's a good base for the reds, but it's just very deceiving on camera. There's not a ton of red on this guy, but where it is there, it's in there in the cloak, as well as his head spines. We're gonna call them head spines. This is where the magic starts happening with this international blue. I started mixing in a little bit of yellow. It was a German yellow, which is just as desaturated a yellow as the international blue. Mix those two colors together and started shifting the tones of his skin into the green range. This is really subtle. Right now it's almost like a blue green, but it is giving me the effect that I want, that I've been looking for. Adding a bit more yellow to the mix, we start going in and highlighting the sharper edges of the skin as well as some of the raised areas just to give a little bit of definition and just help the colors pop a little bit more and just reinforce the idea that this guy is a very vibrant green. Letting the skin dry, we go in on the red robes and the head spine and start just defining those colors a little bit more. 
I'm mixing in a rust red color here. And it's really subtle at first, but it starts to define the shapes and volumes of the fabric. I learned in the Pius Vorn video that when I'm making this particular kind of leathery color, it's a good idea to work in many, many layers. So I'm being very fast and loose as I start to add more of that rust red into it and just just start going a little bit crazy adding you know extra lines scratches and things like that I'm more building up texture than I am painting in specific details it looks terrible right now I'll admit it but the effect overall is very convincing as this starts to hone in on its final version you just wait and see After a certain point, I start going in and just applying tiny little lines and stippling just to give it some more texture and interest to bits of that cloak. I want things to be deep seated patches of color just to provide a little bit of modeling. The strap on the gun is actually a light blue and I have no idea why he's got a light blue gun strap. One, it must be some kind of exotic leather strap I would assume, it does match his cloak in terms of color overall, but I just go in and add a little bit of white to my international blue just to lighten it up. Over top of all the leather bits, I start adding relatively heavy washes of Agrax Earthshade, and this starts tinting and layering and adding some complexity to these non-red leather bits, these brown leather bits essentially, that really gives it a quality and depth that you just can't get, I found, with regular opaque painting. After all that, I go in with a much heavier shade of Agrax Earthshade I hit up the red leather as well as the brown leather. Using Basilicanum Gray as a final darkening agent, I go in and slather on top of the red all over bit to bit. I do make sure it's not pooling in on some of the incorrect places, but largely I let it just sit where it goes. It does dry lighter but it gives it this awesome semi-translucent effect. Normally I find it annoying, but in this case it works really well. I also start refining some of the facial features. This is really about pushing some of those dark areas where I want some more definition. I am satisfied with the blue recesses, but I do need it to be a little bit deeper just to show off some of those forms a little bit better. After that, we're pretty much in touch-up land. Really what we're doing here is pushing contrast, making the light blues a little bit lighter, the darks a little bit darker, pushing a few more layers of Agrax Earthshade on the leather just to make it more effective, and adding a bright layer of our shiniest, shiniest liquid metal, which I believe is a aluminum or chrome, I can never remember. Really, I find this to be one of the most fun stages. It's not a phase where there's a ton of work, per se. You don't cover a lot of things, but you start making some of those details that really start to matter. Helping certain effects stand out, become much more clear, more pronounced. These are the parts that really make a model sing. And that is model done. I put this guy off towards near the end, mainly because I wanted to do him right, which I think was the right thing to do. I wanted to establish a good look for this character. I wanted to make sure that he looked awesome. I, I love this guy. He's so cool looking. And he turned out exactly like I hoped he would. Um, Crute in general, I think, are awesome. I wish that they performed better on the tabletop, but, you know, hey, at least they're pretty. So we've got one last model left. 
in the entirety of our Blackstone Fortress kit. That is Jairus Drake, I think his name is. I probably butchered that. Um, he's pretty intimidating. I'm going to probably do him next week. And then, yeah. Now, I do want to point out that Obsidious Malix has not made an appearance here. I have something special planned, and it's going to take a little time, so we're going to work on him a little bit later. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate your viewership. It, it really does mean the world to me. If you like the video, please leave a like. Those do help. Comments are always appreciated. I do try and respond to all of them. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and the bell button to receive all future notifications. I try and put out new content about once a week. I'm pretty consistent with it. If I'm going to have a gap where I know I'm not going to do a video for a week, I do try and let you know. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This has been Synthetic Black. We'll catch you next time.